you're there. Okay, I understand that you want to know about the S70 Akotnik that was shut down a few days ago, but you have to understand that I have a life, okay? Uh, I, I buy groceries, okay, sometimes. Okay, by popular demand, let's speak about the S70 that was shut down by a Su-57 in Ukraine three days ago. I obviously don't have any more information than anyone else, but I can sort of try to give some interpretations of the consequences that this situation may have on the Russian Air Force. So let's start with the facts. In the area around Konstantinivka, it is in the Donetsk Oblast, in an area still controlled by the Ukrainians, two contrails were spotted quite close to one another, coming from the Russian side of the front line, and at some point, the trailing aircraft fired a short-range missile against the leading aircraft, was hit. And then we have another video showing the aircraft falling to the ground, and it really looks like an S-70 drone. Quite quickly on social media, videos started to appear of the crash site, which, by the way, it seems to have fallen on a house that was partially destroyed, so yeah. And anyway, the wrecks, the debris, really seem to confirm that it is an S-70. It really looks like an S-70. A plethora of news outlets reported that a Su-57 shut down its own S-70. And obviously the answer is, why? Why this happened? So, point number one. Was it really a Su-57? Just yes, because in the videos that I have seen, I really can't identify the aircraft. They really look like a dot, particularly the firing aircraft. I sort of remember having seen in the immediate aftermath of the incident a picture or a video where the silhouette of the Su-57 was visible, but honestly I couldn't find it. It may well could be Mandela effect, so I'm not sure. If you could find anything like that, I'm more than happy to learn about it, and please let me know in the comments below. Point number two. The S-70 is badly burned down. There are not much left. But there were pictures that among the debris, there was a UMPK a guided bomb. So the S-70 seems to have been in an operational mission for real. To be honest, we shouldn't be that surprised because the Russians announced the beginning of the serial production this summer. Some sources say that there are already four in service, even though the one that seems to have fallen looks to me like more prototype rather than a production aircraft. The production aircraft should have a flat nozzle. This doesn't seem to have it, but it may well be burned down and, and not being visible. Some Russian male bloggers say that considering the paint and the color scheme of the aircraft, this is probably a production unit, not a prototype. So, we can't be certain. However, fighter bomber, who is a Russian male blogger who seems to be very well connected with the VKS, said, announced that the operational experimentation started so again, I believe we should not be surprised that an S-70 was carrying live ammunition over Ukraine. And this probably wasn't the first mission. And the fact that we haven't seen any announcement on the Ukrainian side sort of makes me think that the low observability is more or less working. Another thing that we don't know would be interesting to know is the mission profile. That is, was the aircraft being controlled uh, from a remote position from the ground or was the aircraft really being accompanied by a Su-57 that we know can control the S-70 which was the same aircraft that shot it down. As I said, since I can't confirm that the shooter was a Su-57, I can't confirm that the latter was the case. However, we shouldn't be surprised the Su-57 is a long-range attack drone, heavy drone, so it may well have been launched from an airbase deep into Russia. Why is this incident important? Well, because this is a typical case of foreign material exploitation. That is, collecting the wrecks 
and studying them. As I said before, there's not much left of the drone. Probably the guidance system, the computers are completely burned down. And uh, I don't believe there is any possibility of recovering the software, which would be the thing you really wanted to know, even because these systems all have uh, anti-tamper mechanisms that delete all the software, the cryptographic keys and anything else, when situations like this happen. So I don't believe that is going to happen. However, studying the hardware could give uh, quite interesting pieces of information uh, to not just Ukraine, but the West in general. For example, I'm thinking about the rather absorbing materials that may or may not cover this aircraft. I actually believe that the Americans are quite keen to understand if anything that was implemented in the MQ-170, the drone that was hijacked by the Iranians, has been implemented on the S-70. I would be interested. Obviously, the question that everybody is asking is how could this happen? Difficult to say, honestly. I mean, it seems quite clear that the aircraft at the S-70 lost guidance. It seems quite clear that it was flying straight and level over Ukraine. So the Russians decided to shoot it down to avoid it falling into Ukrainian hands, almost intact or with limited damage. What I'm inclined to believe is that the main flight computer, the mission computer, stopped accepting commands. So probably for a software glitch, I would say, or maybe for a power problem, it was simply shut down. But the flight controls kept the aircraft flying straight and steady, and so there was no way of controlling it. It is probably not just the loss of signal, because even the simplest of drones, when they lose signal, have some sort of return to home routine or land in the nearest place routine, so it didn't happen. So it ha must have been something more serious. There's also the possibility that the aircraft is designed to be uh, aerodynamically stable, so in absence of any command, it keeps flying straight and level. This is unlikely, though, because tailless design, the stability in yo is a big problem, so it's unlikely. It is, pro it is probably kept flying by the fly-by-wire system. There's also a possibility that it was hijacked through electronic warfare. It seems very difficult because uh, drone manufacturers have learned their lessons after what the Iranians did. There's also another possibility, very unlikely, that all of this was staged that the aircraft that fell into Ukrainian territory is uh, some sort of very simplified or somehow misleading uh, aircraft. Honestly, this is quite unlikely. It is difficult to see how it could benefit the Russians. They are already way underestimated, so yeah, I don't think they should reinforce this thing. Anyway, there will likely be a longer and more detailed version of this video in the future, in the near future, but not on the channel. It will be somewhere else, so stay tuned for a small surprise. In the meanwhile, thank you very much for giving me your time and attention. I hope it was worth it. Thank you very much to all those who are supporting the channel on Patreon by being a member or by any other of the means available. And by the way, there is also GoFundMe, which is connected to a book that I am planning to write. It's a long-term project. But if you're interested, there will be the link in the description below. If you can support the channel financially, which is perfectly, perfectly fine, please just subscribe if you haven't already, like, hit the bell, and interact in any way because it helps with the algorithm a lot. So I guess this is it. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time, hopefully this time with one of the planned videos.